If you know transformers, then you should know that one of the features they have is what we call permutation equivariance. And permutation equivariance basically means that if I give this transformer a series of tokens, like four tokens in this case, it will generate four outputs. But for some reason, if I just change the order of these tokens, the output orders will be changed accordingly while they're still the same. And in general, transformers do not care about the order of these tokens. But this feature in some cases could be problematic. For example, let's say our input is an image. As you may recall from the VIT video, what we do in such scenario is that we divide this image into equal size patches. And having these patches, if I give them to the transformer module, it will just generate some outputs. But now if I just change the order of these tokens, the output tokens will be changed. And that means that for this transformer that we have at the center, both of these images are exactly the same thing. But they are not, right? But anyway, just to mitigate this issue, what we can do is adding what's so-called absolute position embedding. That's what they did in the VIT paper. That they just concatenate or add what we can see here as these yellowish vectors, P1, P2, P3, and P4. These vectors are randomly initialized and they are learnable through backpropagation. And when we have these tokens and these absolute position embeddings concatenated with them, when we give them to the transformer, it will generate some output. But now if I just change the order of these tokens, let's just say if I just change the order of the second and third token, our inputs now are different because initially this token was concatenated with P3, but now it is concatenated with P2. And similarly, this token was concatenated with P2, and now it is concatenated with P3. So now if I just look at the outputs, the first output and the fourth output would be the same because the tokens are the same, but the second output and the third output are different because they're concatenated with different type of vectors. And just by having this simple idea, our transformer now can preserve the order. Sounds simple, right? But the thing is, it has a problem that decreases the model's generalability. Let's say we have this image with this person at the left corner. What we do is that we divide this image into equal size patches, and by adding absolute position embedding, I can say the patch at the top left is the first patch, the next one is the second patch, and then the third patch, and so on and so forth. But let's just focus only on the second patch, which is our second token. We can see that it has things like his left eye, or part of his hair, and his left ear. But if I just translate this image, and move it to the right corner, now all of the features like his left eye and left ear and part of his hair is on the third patch. While they're exactly the same, they are concatenated with different absolute position embedding. So our transformer should consider this differently and generates a different sort of outputs, but they are exactly the same and they shouldn't be treated different. So how can we solve this? Well, we can rely on relative position bias, which is the title of this video. In relative position bias, when we have an image, we can only focus on one single token, like for example, the right patch, and consider this as our origin that has X0, which is the green circle, and Y0, which is our yellow circle. And now if I just, for example, go one step to the top, then our position would be zero, one. And if I go one step to the bottom, then my position would be zero, negative one. And likewise, for example, if I go one step to the left and one step to the top, then my position would be negative one and one. And for the rest of the patches, I can treat them exactly like the same and we have these sort of positions. And now let's just say our origin is not the right patch, but instead it is our top right. 
So that's my origin 0, 0. And I can say if I go one step to the left, it would be negative 1 and 0. One step to the bottom would be 0, negative 1. And I can define for the rest of the patches as well. But what's the purpose of doing this? Now, if I translate this person from the right to the left, the absolute positions will be translated accordingly and they are exactly the same as like they used to be. And there is no difference between these tokens and what they initially were. But uh, yeah, we have three tokens at the right and they are new. So we can just define what are the relative positions for them as well. And we have this image. At least for these six tokens that we have for the left, they are exactly what, like what they used to be and their outputs would be the same. But using this relative position bias idea doesn't necessarily solve all of the problem. Because for example, let's just say that I translate this person, but not that much. I mean, now we have different patches. While it is exactly the same person as he used to be, but now we have different patches and so we are generating different outputs. And for solving this problem, we can, for example, use like smaller tokens, smaller patch sizes. But as you might remember, we have quadratic complexity in memory, which is another issue. And that's not the focus of this video. But anyway, that's the idea behind relative position bias, just to preserve the order relatively for each patch that we have in the image. And one final key note for the intuition that I'd like to point out is that let's just say our input is not an image and instead it is a graph, like this graph that we see at the right. If I use absolute position embedding, then I can say the top left would be the first one and then the next one would be second, third, four and five. We have five absolute positions. But what would happen if I just rotate this graph? If I use the same algorithm like before, then absolute positions would be this thing. And this graph would be treated differently while it is exactly like before. So even in this case, I should rely on relative position bias. And by using that, this graph and the rotated graph would be treated exactly the same. So enough of this intuition, let's just see how can we apply relative position bias to our self-attention module. You might have a couple questions in your mind like what is the origin after all? Should I even pick that? Well, just hold on because the moment I explain this, you're gonna figure it out. So assuming that we have this image and nine tokens, I mean nine patches, which one is our origin? Actually, all of them is our origin. So we can have like a nine dimensional vector that for each element, we can consider that token as our origin. But what about the relative positions? We can define some columns. So for example, let's just say that I pick the fourth row and the third column, then the element that I put in the matrix, that basically means that assuming that the fourth patch is my origin, what would be the relative position of the third patch? And for every other elements, I can define that as well. So the first row would be the relative positions in the case of picking the first patch as my origin, the second row for the case that I pick the second patch as my origin, and so on and so forth. But what would be the dimension of this matrix after all? So if I have M equals three columns for the patches and M equals three rows for the patches as well, then the dimension of this matrix would be m squared times m squared because I have m squared patches 
and I have to pick them as the origin separately and see what are the relative positions of every other patches with respect to that single patch. I hope it makes sense. And uh, how can we apply that to the self-attention? If we look at the Swin Transformer paper, we can see this formula that it basically says that before applying the softmax function and after applying the outer product of the query and key, I can simply add these B matrix. And uh, the dimensions make sense because the outer product of query and key are m squared and m squared and b is also m squared times m squared. So we can just add them and use the self-attention formula. But how can we construct this b matrix? So in the Swain Transformer paper, they say, assuming that m is the window size, I mean the patch size in our case, then the relative positions along each axis lies in the range minus m plus one and m minus one. And just to give you a hint, let's just say m equals 4. Then based on this formula, the range should be between negative 3 and 3. But why? Just Let's just say that I pick only a row of my image. I mean, a row of patches. Then assuming that a14 is my origin, then the largest distance would be that distance between a14 and a11 which is negative 3. And assuming that a11 is my origin, then the largest distance would be between a11 and a14 which is 3. So the distance should lie in this range negative 3 and 3 and we have a seven dimensional vector because we need three elements for storing these three positive distances, three for three negative distances and one for the origin 0. And in general, assuming that m is not 4, it is a parameter, then this range would be 2m minus 1 dimensional. So we can just parameterize a b hat matrix 2m minus 1 times 2m minus 1. And the values of this b matrix, which is m squared times m squared, and could be larger than this b hat, are taken from this b hat. So b hat is a random matrix that we define it, it is learnable, and the values of b are taken from b hat. And this is the only thing that they mentioned in the paper. But how can we pick that value? That might be our question. And to understand that, we have to look at their implementation just to know what's happening in the detail. If you look at the Swing Transformers implementation of relative position bias, we can see this class window attention that in the init function they define what's so called relative position bias table which is our b hat and as we can see it is an n dot parameter so it is a learnable parameter through back propagation and the initial values are coming from torch dot zeros and the dimension is two times window size zero minus one or two m minus one times 2 times the window size 1 minus 1, which is again 2m minus 1, and the number of heads. And then for seeing when it is used, we can see at the forward function that they define relative position bias, which is our b, that the values are coming from this b hat relative position bias table, but that depends on the relative position index, which is our question that how can we construct this relative position index and pick the values of b hat and construct this b. And uh, before explaining this relative position index, let's just see what happens next. At the next line, they just permute and change the dimension of this relative position bias. And then they say the attention, which is the outer product of query and key, would be added by this relative position bias. And this attention and later, if you look, there is some softmax and multiplication by value. But anyway, let's just see how can we construct this relative position index just to answer our question. So if we further look inside this init function, we can see this, that by these lines of code, they construct this relative position index. 
So let's just look at it one line at a time and realize what's happening. So in the first line, the coordinate H, which is the height coordinates, are created. And assuming the window size is M times M, and both of the M's are 4, then we can see that uh, by just applying this torch that range 4, the coordinates of height are just some coordinates from 0 to 3. And similarly for coordinates W, which are the coordinates for the width, are again 0 to 3. And then by applying this torch that mesh grid, we can have these tensors that if we stack them together and make them flatten at the next line, we can see this. That the first column are the coordinate 0, 0, the second column are the coordinate 0, 1, and then 0, 2, and then 0, 3, 1, 0, and so on and so forth. So this coordinates flatten, each column represents a coordinate in our coordinate system. But these are absolute coordinates, and for relative position bias, we need relative coordinates just to see what are the relative positions when we select one single patch. So in the next line, the relative coordinates are created by doing this, that at first we just add this none at the third dimension, which makes the torch size to be 2 times 16 times 1. 16 is m squared. We have m squared patches. And then for the next one, we apply none on the second dimension, which makes it 2 times 1 times 16. And by subtracting these two tensors, what it does is that it compares every single patch, every one of these 16 patches, it compares the relative coordinates together and makes these relative coordinates. So yeah, that's what it does. And we can see it further in the next line. So if we just permute this, we can see this, that I just printed the first two elements in the first dimension just to show you what it means. As you can see in the printed line, there are two sections. The first section is for the case that I make the patch 00, 0 as my origin. And in the second section is for the case that I make the patch 0, 01 or the second patch as my origin. And I can see what are the relative positions for every other. So let's just see more in detail. So here is for the case that 00, 0 is my origin and it wants to compare the relative coordinate with itself. So I just don't need to move anywhere, so, and the distance between 0, 0 and 0, 0 is again 0, 0. And here is the case that I say, 0, 0 is my origin, what would be the distance between 0, 0 and 0, 1? It would be 0 and negative 1. And 0, 0 and 0, 2 would be 0, negative 2, and for the rest of them I can define as well. And for the next section is for the case that I define 0, 1 as my origin. Then the distance between 0, 1 and 0, 0 would be 0, 1. The distance between 0, 1 and 0, 1 would be 0, 0. The distance between 0, 1 and 0, 2 would be 0, negative 1. And for the rest of them I can define as well. I hope it makes sense. Just think about it. And the next thing to point out is that ultimately we just want to pick some values from b hat some indices and we know that indices are positive we, they can they are starting from zero and go, they go on but here we have some negative values like negative one negative three and uh we cannot have these negative indices for just getting rid of that we remember that the range lies in negative m plus one and m minus one which is, assuming that m is 4, then it should be between negative 3 and 3. So I just need to add the value of 3 just to get rid of this negative indices and shift my relative coordinates. That's what they do in the next lines. And as we can see here, after applying this shifting, all of the relative coordinates are positive. So our indices we are making sure that they are all positive.
So in the next line, we just need to multiply the rows by 2m minus 1. But what's the reason behind this? So let's just assume that we have this one. We have, as I said, m is 4, so we have 4 by 4 patches. And I want to show you why do we do this. So we have this b hat matrix, and inside this b hat matrix, I only can store one single value. But in the previous examples, I was showing you a pair of values, like what are the distances in the x and y. But instead of x and y, I only can just store a single value. So let's just say a11 is my origin. Then a12, the distance would be 1. a13, the distance would be 2. a14, the distance would be 3. But what about a21? Should it be 1 again? If it is 1 again, then there is no difference between a12 and a21. But there is. So since I already know that a14 is 3, a21 should be a value bigger than that. And for some reason, they just multiply that number by, instead of just saying that it is 1, they multiply it by 2m minus 1. So in, in the case of being m equals 4, they are multiplying by 7. So they know that the distance relies in negative 3 and 3, they are 7-dimensional. Maybe because of that, they are multiplying by 7, and a21, the distance would be 7. And then a22 would be 8, a23 would be like 9, and so on and so forth. And finally, if we just apply this sum on the last dimension and print this relative position bias, we can see this matrix that, to be honest, at first when I took a look, it made no sense. But then I realized that all of the diagonal entries are 24. So if I subtract all of this 24 by 24, then it actually makes sense. Because the first row is for the case that I say the 0, 0 is my origin, then the distance with 0, 1 is negative 1, 0, 2 is negative 2, 0, 3 is negative 3, and then 1, 0 is negative 7, 1, 2 is negative 8, and I can define for the rest as well. So yeah, that's what we have defined in b hat, and we can pick the value of b from this b hat, and yep, that's it. And as you can see, we have some entries that are repeated. For example, all of the diagonal entries are the same. So for all of the diagonal entries in b, they are having the same element from b hat, because the dimension of b is larger than b hat, and that makes sense. So yeah, that's it from the relative position bias. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching it, and until the next video, goodbye.